Welcome to ISIS in the Bible Spring Gathering, week number three. Uh Uh-oh. What happens when you know an uh uh-oh is coming? Are you going to remain centered? Ready to help others? The question for today is, would you want to know? Would you want to know if an uh uh-oh is coming? If there was a tidal wave of cleanses that hit your crown chakra that lasts for years, would you want to know so you can prepare, so you can help others? right uh we went around the room and everybody shared there's we got many of the yeses and uh and one no and i'll share those when i edit the video for me it's a it's a catch-22 because i don't want to manifest something that may not happen but at the same time if it's written to happen written in the bible written all over the egyptian walls written everywhere As long as we know the truth about it, and if the truth is beautiful, then we should share it, but not share the the misunderstanding of it. So that's where I'm stuck in a fence. So I decided that, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna share it, but do it and try to do it in the most loving way as possible. So we're gonna talk about what's happening in the sky first. For today, exactly three through three p.m., the sun aligns royal star Aldebaran, which is in Taurus. All right. And Aldebaran is one of the four royal stars. So the four royal stars are the brightest stars in the night sky. They represent the fixed cross of fire, earth, air, and water. Taurus is the earth. The message today is ensure you care about Mother Earth and the earth and mothers. Every being that has a mother, animals, insects, whatever. The message today is to care about that. That's what that one states. There are two other alignments that are happening. These are, I'm just going to say the vibrations. You don't have to understand astrology, but this one's important because the North Node, the tail, the, the head of the snake, which is making its way to reset the clock with Eris this fall. So that's important. This is a, that's a major energy. And it's aligned Jupiter, which is law in Aries, our head. So that means be law minded, pure spiritual law minded. That's the message today. And then we also have Vesta of the Vestal Virgins and Uranus of Winds of Change. In other words, making sure you protect your hearth, that fire within, that pureness. In other words, making sure we keep the waters clean. So there's a there's a hidden message even for me as I'm trying to articulate this message today. Right. But if we if we go forward and think about a plague versus a cleanse, because in the past they called them plagues because they don't understand them. They still let everybody know, but they misinformed it. So we're going to show you proof that these are loving cleanses we are speaking about. So it kind of makes you feel a little better about wanting to know them when you know that they're a cleanse, cleanse of our waters. And a new motto is that the cleansings will continue until the morale improves, the loving morals, your heart center. So today we're going to focus on the Pisces station of the cross. Zero degree Pisces, where Mary meets with you on this energetic cusp, but we're gonna use 1343 AD because it's a cycle, right? Every 558 years, she'll be on the cusp of zero degree Pisces, that station of the cross. So I have a little animation here. You are looking at Mary's 70 year cycle where she transits through Aquarius. Let's have a look at what happened when Mary and you met on the Station of the Cross at zero degree Pisces in 1343 AD. We will focus on if there was a plague or what is really a cleanse during this time. So that plague in 1343 to 1351 and beyond, because people get cleansed all the time but sometimes they're much stronger. And why? Well, we're going to prove to you it's because the luminaries are on the stations of the cross. So further to our previous videos we've done on the Black Death, we've gotten more data on testaments from the book, The Black Death Transformed, Disease and Culture in Early Renaissance Europe. If you keep one thing in mind, please remember the stations of the cross. Again, it's not a plague, it's a cleanse. It's a cleanse of vibrations that needs to leave our body. That's why I chose to share this truth. I want you to know that it's not a plague. 
it's something that you can, with your free will, make sure that don't have this sudden cleanse. In the book, there's a reference called Note Petri Passerini. Man, this, this was really hard to find. And this is accounts on how events started in 1343. Tensions rising, similar to what we're feeling today. Well, of course, Mama was on a station of a cross with you. They speak about a great earthquake, pestilences, and relief of karmic debt. Pestilences mean that the, the if you pay money, the, the Vatican will, will forgive your sins. Well, it doesn't work that way. The only way to forgive your sins is with love. You got to be heart-centered. That's the part that I want you to know. I'm going to keep stating it. So do you remember doing the circle of fifths from the 60 repeating golden ratio numbers? If not, please do the exercise in our free book. Look at the fives. Th these fives represent the cusps of the zodiac sign. And when luminaries go over that, they are very much amplified, right? So the cusps, you can see the cross. When they're on there, they're energetic fifths. And then there are also zeros. That's what makes the cross, right? So when in 1343 AD, of course, that's on a fifth of music. Those fives are energetic for sure, but the zeros are even more so. This should strike a chord with you. A pun is intended. So the focus is going to show you that, yes, there's energetic alignments on those days. The thing is, is that one of the misnomers of the brightest stars, like the four royal stars, the brightest stars in the sky, they affect you physically. The dimmer stars in the sky, they affect you more spiritually. They're not dimmer because they're far away. No, they're dimmer because they affect you more spiritually. The black is pure potential. The black is the ether. The black is pure love. The black will recharge. Remember, you go to sleep, you recharge. That's the black. You don't see light when you sleep. So you have to realize that those aren't further away, those stars. They have more influence. So the ones we can't see with a naked eye, the ones we're going to show you, when they're hitting that cusp, they hit you spiritually. And that's what we're upon. So the Black Death was a pandemic. Pan means the all, means spirit. So it means mama's home. That ravaged Europe between 1347, it actually started 1343. They're just This is when they started when they started tracking the deaths, not the cleanses, the, only the deaths, because many people cleansed and lived, taking a proportionately greater role, toll on life than other known epidemic up to that time. But it happened, the Black Death didn't only happen in Europe. People were cleansing all around the earth. There's all kinds of testaments to that. But this one's just got the most notability for some reason, because it was in Europe. No, again, so they're only recording the deaths, not all the cleanses, which started when Eris, a.k.a. Mary, landed upon the Station of the Cross in 1343. Exactly, guys. So let's have a look. Here is just one sample from that book, The Testaments from European Cities. So as you can see from this book, The Black Death Transformed. Here you go. Okay, regular deaths, regular deaths. Ooh, but May, June, July, August, September, down. Boom, look at that bump in 1348. Let's move it aside. In 1348, in June, and that peak, look what was on the cusps. See these luminaries? They're on the cusp. They're energetic. They're moving across. They retrograde back and forth across them. We'll share some more with you. Also from that book, this is from 1349. Look at the peak, November, December, February, up through the spring and then settles back down, right? I've got a little clip here for you to watch what's happening. So you can see Sarah's in Pluto. Sarah's is the harvester, right? In the spring in March, And then we're showing you that, watch, keep an eye on Hygieia. Moving closer to, everybody getting the Hygieia cleanse, all right? In April, right? So you got, and then you got, watch, keep an eye on Juno. And then Juno gets there. So you got Juno, you got Pluto at two degree, you got Eris at two degree, and you got Neptune 
that's very, very energetic. When I do people's charts, and we're going to get into one just in a little bit of detail, this is what where they're at. It's very significant when they cleanse. This is from our previous video, another example of when things were happening. Pluto's on the zero, Sarah's aligns with Eris, and there was deaths. But again, it's only the deaths, but they're not, it, they're cleanses, we're infinite, we come back. It's okay to know that we're cleansing vibrations in our body that aren't pure, they're not loving. And that's the example that I'm gonna go over. So here's 1363. Here's the te testaments in six cities. April, May, June, July, August. And look what was happening in June. Neptune, the North and South Node in Hygieia. They're on the energetic cusp, the circle of fifths. Now here's the 1665, I'm jumping ahead to show you another plague. The 1665 London plague. This would have happened all over the world as well. The outbreak, the Great Plague of London started in the spring of 1665 and lasted until late 1666. It was a major outbreak of the bubonic plague. Again, this is not a bacteria. They're watching what happens to cells, but this, that comes from the inside. It's not something that you catch. It's removing the Dr. Emoto vibrations that aren't loving in your body. Okay, so have a look. Watch this. They said started in the spring of 1665 and lasted till late 1666. Now watch energetic Neptune and Sarah as the harvester. So Sarah's comes up, aligns exactly on the cusp. See, zero, zero on the station of the cross, right on a zero in April of 1665. Why does it keep lasting? Neptune goes retrograde going back in the sky. And then Ceres goes retrograde right on that cusp. That's when we get cleanses. And as you can keep going, August, September, and then Ceres meets with Neptune again and then carries on. And then for 1666, Neptune is still here. So people's chart will still get lit up. Let's talk about the 2023 cleanse. So you know people have been exiting, you know people have been cleansing, you know people have been getting tired, you know people have been uh, getting flu symptoms, all the different things. And you know that they're, the hospitals are on record, they write down COVID no matter what happens, whether it's a flu symptom, whatever, because they know that this is happening. That's why they were prepared for it, but they didn't tell anybody, they just made money. So here's what's happening. The same thing happened. Do you see Ceres going forward? Hitting retrograde, coming back, aligning and hitting with Neptune. Okay, and then back again. That was a major portion of a cleanse. Of course, I'm not showing it here, but Eris, Mary, is on this one right here, eh? The zero, the Phoenix rising location. It's a special one. So that's been happening there. So here's a ticket. We have some similar alignments coming up. So September 5th, 2023, we have Pluto on, on a cusp still. We have, and they're going retrograde. So they're going towards, back towards it again. Neptune, which has been going, so they've been jumping back and forth across these, back and forth, because they're slow moving back and forth. Eris, back and forth. And then you got Sarah as the harvester in her home position. This is her home position right here. So we can expect people to be cleansing. But that's trying to get rid of the non-loving waters in your body. So we have that alignment happening around September 5th. October 4th, again, Mars being there. This is where the North Nodes start aligning here on this cross. This is going to reset the calendar. This is basically resetting the Julian calendar. All right, Juno's on the cross on a, on a on a station of the cross, and so is Pluto. Remember, these ones you can't see with your naked eye, so they're stronger and they hit you spiritually. They want to cleanse your waters. And then we have another one that I wanted to mention, November 15th. So the one, one is close to my birthday, one's close to my dad's birthday. I wonder why. 
So here's another one. Okay, Stations of the Cross, Neptune at zero, Mary and the North and South Node at zero, Mars and, and Ceres, and then Pluto is, is leaving. And this is going to affect the whole world. So I dim this portion out for a reason. Because there's very much similarities with all the different plagues and what happens with the soft tissue. The soft tissue starts doing funny things under the microscope. They think it's a bacteria, but it's not. It's love. It's love that needs to resolve the unloving cells in your body. Those are the memories from our past. And they will cleanse out. So our, our job is to realize them. So Daniel 9.25, Know therefore and understand that from going forth on the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem until anointed with one, Rebuilding Jerusalem, Jerusalem is the zodiac, number one, and it's your zodiac, and the zodiac will rebuild you. So it's important that, that we stay heart-centered. So now I want to give you a little example. Somewhere around the world, I'm not going to say where or who, somebody got a hold of me and let me know that a family member is in the hospital, and they're going through one of these cleanses where the soft tissue is just basically disappearing. I'm not even going to name what they call it because I'm not manifesting that. So I asked if I can do their chart and they said, absolutely. So I did this loved one's chart. So it was a, it was a parent and their child was in the hospital and they're going through this exact same scenario of what they call a plague, but it's not. So I did her chart and I could see that it's exactly aligned with what the same type of alignment that I'm showing you. I know what the cause is. So I asked the parent and I said, is there someone in your family that is not getting along with somebody? I mean, really deeply. I mean, really non-lovingly, is there something going on? And that parent stopped and asked me for more clarification. And I told them, I said, there's something that's non-loving in a relationship with somebody in your in your family and so your child is taking one for the team because we're a lineage of karma and he said well that would be me so i'm not going to explain the detail what he said but he's carrying something very deeply where he does not love somebody in his family in his lineage and it's not good so i explained to him that he needs to clear that because he did that to somebody else and that's why he's feeling it that's the way it works they're karmic waves of non-love and when these energies come and when it sees a cell that's not crystallized beautifully like dr emoto shows those cells start to turn that they won't want to be there anymore and they disappear so they're being cleansed so that is the message that I wanted you to know. So long as we're heart-centered, you'll be fine. What we don't want to do is people start running around crazy screaming because they're going to try to look for a, a remedy. The remedy is love. We have to change the cells in our body to be loving. So that's where we got to go. That's what we have to do. So every day when something's non-loving in your life, it's trying to resolve, it's trying to give you a sign. It's really trying to tell you that, hey, I'm over here, I'm reminding you. So everybody's chart's different. And like, if this, if this message got out to everybody, everybody's gonna want to get their astrology chart done? No, that's not the, that's not the answer. The answer is who you're not loving and make it loving period because when you cleanse that your whole body feels fantastic and when these energies come by they're going to invigorate you they're going to give you blissful loving feelings and that's where that song comes in we regain that loving feeling right so that's all i have for today i just want to let you know that these energies are coming and if we're heart-centered 
we're going to be fine. And I know everybody in this room is. But I want to let you know so that when you see others, you got to let them know that's the remedy. Love. Love.